What's going on everybody? In this video, we are going to be talking about what's going on in the crypto and NFT markets. Starting off with what's going on with Ethereum and overall in the macro economic sentiment in crypto, everything for the most part has been pretty stable. Nothing crazy going on. Ethereum has kind of been sitting at 1.8 ish for quite some time. So at least it's not dropping. It's not pumping up. You know, at this current market sentiment, a lot of people, especially the builder side and the VCs and stuff that I've been talking to, they all predict that the bull market will come back. But when will it come back? Nobody truly knows. I don't want to give a date because, you know, it's literally just guessing at this point because it depends on the S&P 500 and so many other economic factors. But for the most part, most people are kind of bullish. And even people who, you know, that I talk to who don't really get into crypto and they don't even have any Bitcoin or Ethereum, they're even thinking about like, hey, you know, like, should I buy, be buying stuff? Is this the right time? So definitely something is brewing, but you just have to be careful of your entry, exit, and dollar cost averaging, right? But diving into some of the hottest NFT news right now, we're gonna start off with some drama. One project that recently had a lot of steam over the past year, it's Renga, right? So Renga has 52,000 volume on ETH, which is actually quite a lot. So for Renga, their whole drama going on is that Dirty Robot, which is the artist, will be taking over the company as CEO. Essentially, the other original CEO, he's going to be stepping down or leaving the company. And it's not really clear on exactly what the internal issues are, but it seems like there are some internal issues and now it's going to be a artist led company. Now the challenge here is that for an NFT project, of course, art is gonna be important, but the business savviness, people who do business development, marketing, the business mindset, they also have to be on the pushing that envelope as well. So in this example, it's gonna be an artist led project. So I'm curious to see for Dirty Robot, what kind of skills he has to take a NFT project to the next level. So we'll have to see and find out. Okay, so next thing we're gonna talk about is PayPal. So PayPal, obviously one of the largest financial financial institutions in the game right now, especially for people who do online business, they are launching their own US dollar stable coin. So you're going to be able to transfer your PayPal USD to external wallets. You can send person to person payments using PYUSD, fund purchases using their stable coin, convert any cryptocurrency into PayPal USD. So it's going to be on the Ethereum network. So it seems like, you know, PayPal is getting in the game. And of course, it makes sense for them to do a stable coin because there's a lot of money involved, right? If everyone is already using PayPal or a lot of people are using PayPal, PayPal. by offering crypto it makes it easier for people to buy and sell and convert in crypto that's one of the challenges right now in general in cryptocurrencies where if you have crypto and you're trying to get it into fiat a lot of times there's a lot of hoops and things you have to jump right but this you know if you're able to convert like ethereum into paypal usd and then or move it into paypal and somehow convert it to fiat you know it makes the process potentially much easier and the company that is actually handling this whole crypto side is going to be paxos you can see over here they have a couple other stable coins paypal usd is going to be fully backed by US dollar deposits, short-term US treasuries, and other cash equivalents, right? So this is the interesting part for me because basically they're saying, hey, here's a PayPal USD. Give me, you know, whatever currency you have. And then we're going to take that money and use it to buy short-term US treasury. So for example, like a three month treasury bill rates right now, it's gonna be like 5%. So they're gonna be earning percentages on their money. So that's essentially the game. If they just play it safe, buy cash equivalent stuff or treasury bonds and earn, you know, a couple percent every so often, then that's a very big business for them, especially if they're handling, let's say billions of dollars, right? All right, next thing we're gonna talk about, it's gonna be Yuga Labs. So Yuga Labs has this game called Rec League and essentially it's a fighting game under the Yuga Lab, I guess, board ape ecosystem. So it's gonna be like this mechanical style fighting game. There's also some gameplay as well. So it kind of looks like this where the robots are kind of fighting each other. So the company that's actually making this game for Yuga Lab is going to be this company called Enway. So they have made other fighting games like Battle Palooza, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, Power Rangers Legacy Wars, right? So, I mean, this one has 7 million downloads. So that's quite a lot. So yeah, I mean, they're hiring people that actually have made games before. I think the challenge here for this particular game, in my opinion, is that you know, when you're making a fighting game like that's Power Rangers, right? The game itself doesn't have to be the best game ever. You know, it has to be like decent enough and passable. And the IP of Power Rangers and everybody knows it is what actually carries it, right? So that's why you see a lot of uh, games that use like Ninja Turtles or a lot of popular IPs. They're not necessarily the best like games or the best fighting games. Or like back when I was a kid, I remember I had uh, Shrek. You know, there's a Shrek game where you like fight, run around and stuff like that, right? It's not necessarily the best game and it doesn't have the best mechanics, but because Shrek or Power Rangers 
Rangers and Ninja Turtles is on it, people will want to play it, right? I mean, I haven't played this Power Rangers game, so you know, I, I'm not saying it's a good or a bad game, but I'm just saying in general for IP, that's kind of like how it goes. The thing here is like when we're looking at the gameplay for Rec League, because the IP itself, it's like these mechanical robots and it's not super distinguishable, right? It's not like an iconic Gundam or something like that that people know. I feel like it's kind of hard to sell to a Web2 audience because they're not familiar with the IP. That's why IP is so valuable. So there's a little bit of an uphill battle there. Of course, you know, people who have the Yuga assets will want to play this game. And so that's going to be your first, I don't know, thousand players maybe. But besides that, you know, there are definitely some challenges in creating a new IP like this. But hey, you know, it could be something. They can make it into something. I'm just saying that there's always challenges there. Next news is I want to talk about Beeple real quick. So Beeple essentially is doing this crypto punk meetup in Charleston. You have to own a crypto punk or some kind of Beeple nft to rsvp it's kind of interesting because i feel like when people doing this promotion for this whole crypto punk thing it seems like a big event that obviously a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into based on the venue itself so i kind of feel like and it's just my speculation i guess really that it's something that was planned from the beginning so like for example on august 2nd which was a week ago he recently purchased this crypto punk right he says this one's like really represents him and stuff right and it seems very organic seems like you know he just wants to buy an nft he's like i never bought an nft before but actually what i personally think is that you know he's probably in direct communication with what's going on with yuga labs and maybe they want to put more excitement back into crypto punks making it like the go-to pfp that you have to own if you get into crypto right and i feel like for contemporary art especially you know you have to do a lot of marketing push to make something of value and to convince other people that it is of value so the asset goes up right so because this was literally a week ago and the crypto punks meetup suddenly is announced and it's going to be you know next month i feel like it could be a coordinated marketing push that is meant to be seen as organic there's nothing wrong with that you know what i mean they're just promoting crypto in general which is good for the entire space but those are, those are just things that i look out for but if it's all organic and you know this all just happened naturally like really quick hey you know that could be a possibility too all right anyways next i want to talk about a different kind of artist which is jack butcher you know obviously jack butcher has been making a lot of waves with some of his projects like check and things like that and recently i started to dive a little bit more deeper to learn about like who is this guy i mean this video he has pinned up on his twitter was actually a pretty good summary of like what he's about his philosophy so visualized value originally started as like now i call it art in hindsight but at the time it was like it was more of a way to demonstrate the type of work that i wanted to be doing for other people and it was still like almost a, like a, a cleaner version of the agency business where you have a very specific skill set that you can express consistently by putting media out into the world. Overall, my personal sentiment is that it's actually pretty cool. I think from an artist and business marketing perspective in the current like NFT I guess art scene he's definitely uh one of the people that is leading the charge that's that's without a doubt right he's able to continue to launch projects every other month essentially and he, he finds like different creative ways to do it whether it's an open edition whether it's like these checks that you combined and stuff like that you know he's definitely someone that is an artist who makes it very simple easy to understand but he really understands that whole like marketing side if you look into his history he's been doing like a lot of different type of content he's sold like digital products like teaching you different things like info products so like he's definitely someone that understands internet marketing so basically it's like taking that internet marketing skill set which is also part of what i come from from like online courses and stuff like that and then combining it with nfts and art and here we go you know jack butcher i feel like people should do a little more research on because i think possibly in the next bull run he'll probably make some kind of impact on the space and i think a lot of artists probably should like look at what he's doing so they can understand how to sell art in different creative ways right because it's not necessarily who is the best technical artist who will make the most money it's like who's like good as an artist, but also understands that marketing business aspect to it. And so with that said, that's everything we got to cover for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what kind of projects you want me to cover next, and I will see you in the next one.